All right, everybody, here we go. Let's get into this. Everybody's here, everybody's excited. So I'm kind of excited, we've got a good topic today. Uh, and I'm gonna make you guess. I'm gonna make you guess what today's topic is. But before we do that, let's pop in here. Ba-boom, there we are. And let's say hello to everybody who's in the house, the chat, the room, you know. Lolly's on top again, what's up, Lolly? Pop. Uh, Midi, how you doing, Midi? In number two, that's okay. You're all right, you're doing all right. Narayana, Narayana's given some slang lessons today. So if you wanna learn some new slang with Narayana, starting her new YouTube channel soon, check out the slang below and click subscribe. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, uh, who else we got here? Gertie's in the house, what's up, Gertie? Gertz, Gertie, got lots of nicknames for you, Gertie. Uh, who else, Nana's back, what's up, Nana, where you been? She's been doing tests and stuff. She was always into the tests. Uh, who else? Pilar is back in the house. Pilar is back. What's up? She's been, she's in and she's out. She's in and out, but she's in today, and that's awesome. The real Canadians in the house. What's up, Denise? Uh, who else we got? Rehab's in the house. There's a song about rehab. Uh, Amy Winehouse, right? Rehab. Got to go to rehab. Uh, Judy's in the house. Yeah, Judy. Uh, I saw that. Very nice. Very nice combo. Uh, who else we got here? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Who else is in the house? Who made it on a Thursday? Eagle Smart's back. What's up? One of the one of the big point getters from yesterday. What's up? Uh, so what? How you doing? Amr, how you doing? Vahid, how you doing? Loid, Loyed. Loyed? Yes. How are you doing? Farah, how you doing? Igor, my man is back. What's up with you? Kelvin, how you doing, buddy? Uh, who else we got here? Tatiana's back. What's up, Tatiana? Oh yeah, it is America Day. It's uh, Independence Day. Let's see what's happening in America for Independence Day. So yeah, if you didn't know, I talked about it on, oh, there's a tank. Oh my God, no. Oh wait, you can't see my screen. Let me, let me do this. I was looking at this. Uh, Independence Day, oh my God, aliens are coming. That's what's happening today. We're being attacked by aliens from another planet. Okay, so anyways, I'm sure that's not happening in America, but oh, what's going on? Yeah, sold out, I gotta get out of here. I don't wanna spoil this surprise. I got a secret today. Uh, Lamia, how you doing? Noir Noir is back, what's up? Uh, who else we got in here? Oh man, everyone's popping in. Uh, coo, 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 coo. Wesley, my man, is back. Ezra, hello, how are you? Vlade, how you doing, brother? Uh, Ivan's back, what's up, Ivan? Maria's back, what's up, Maria? Malika's back, what's up, Malika? I gotta, I gotta make sure I get my, give my what's up to everybody. I love the house, I love the house. I love to say hello to the house. Amina, what's up with you? What's going on? I can't see that emoji, but anyways, all right. Here we go, let's get into this because 
It's an interesting topic, and I'm going to set you up, and I want you to, basically, I'm going to give you some words, and I want you to tell me, take a guess, what today's, oh, I miss you too, Malika. Uh, I want you to guess what today's topic is. So here we go. Let's jump in, shall we? Okay, so the question of the day is, so let me throw it into the chat first, uh, is this, uh, what is today's topic? And let me give you a word. I'm going to give you one word at a time, just one by one by one, to make it a little bit more dramatic, OK? So here we go. Here's word number one. Hmm. All right. Let's try this one. Word number one is existential threats. What are existential threats? So existential is a big word. And you can think of existential as like, Maybe I don't really understand how to use it. Existing existing threats, or is it outside threats? Oh my God! You know what? I actually got to Google this. Existential. I need a, I need a proper definition. And how do I spell it? existential? There it is. See, even teachers learn sometimes. Relating to existence. Okay, so it is really. It's not about that. It's not about the outside. It's about that. Okay, so existing threats. You can think about it as that. Uh, and it says here, concerned with human existence. So I'll show you this screen. So existential means usually concerning human existence. And if we say threat, what is a threat? Let's take a look at some threats, shall we? Threats, and let's see what pops up. That's a threat. That skull is a threat. That guy's a threat. Look at him. He wants to get all your videos of cute little puppies and baby cats. He's trying to get them. Threats, threats, okay, there's a bunch of words. Anyways, those are threats. So threats are dangerous things. Come on, come on, get away from it, get away from it. No, damn it. Okay, I'm going back here. This is the safe, this is the safe room. Okay, so threats is the first word, existential threats. Is it about, yeah, threats to our existence, thank you. Pollution, yeah. Hackers, yeah, could be, could be an existential threat. So that's the first word. The first word is, ex well, first two words are existential threats. Now the second word is, I'm going to throw a big word at you. Here we go, big word time, symbiosis. Do you know what symbiosis means? You are a threat, Rodrigo. I totally agree with that. Rodrigo, it might be the biggest existential threat in this room for sure. Uh, symbiosis is similar to connection. So you can think of symbiosis as living together. So for example, if you live with the animals in the forest and you use each other to survive, that would be a symbiotic relationship. So symbiosis is a noun which we use to talk about kind of working together, symbiosis. Uh, yes, it is a bi biology term. Let's see. Let's see what it says here. Symbiosis. What I say? The interaction between two different organisms living in close physical association. So basically, two life forms, two two kinds of life, living together in close association, close connection. Usually, there's advantages to both situations. Okay. So there's the other one. Okay, any ideas yet? So I got ex ex existential threats, symbiosis. What do you think? What, are, what is the topic of today? Um, we're not going to talk about biology, no. Well, maybe, but maybe not really. Okay, so let me give you another one. So remember, the question is, what is today's topic? Let me give you another one. Oh, this is, okay, this, this might help you. I and a pretty woman do have symbiosis. Yes, exactly, you're right. What's up, Spider-Man? How are you doing, man? Get in here. We're talking. We're trying to guess what the heck today's topic is, and I've given three words. Existential threats, symbiosis, and algorithm is the new one. It's not about the environment, no. Uh, something in, in uh, is it about communication? Is it about science? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I'm looking for one word. Or maybe two words. Sorry, it could be two words. Science. Can we say something? which is against the law is called an existential threat. Probably not. Uh, existential threat means it's dangerous to your existence. And I believe we have a winner. So let me give you those two words that I didn't give you. Uh, so let me pull up my screen. I believe we have a winner. I've seen the answer. So here are the words here. Uh, we had algorithm, 
exponentially smarter mm -hmm, mm -hmm, digital uh, symbiosis and existential threats. What is today's topic? Yes, two people have the answer today. And the answer is correct. Eagle Smart said it first. You got it. You are Eagle Smart AI. Today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence. Mm, interesting topic. So let's take a look at some artificial intelligence and let's see what does it look like. Maybe we can get a picture. Maybe we can get a GIF. Mm, let's check it out. So let's see what does artificial intelligence look like these days. It might look like this. It might look like something out of the matrix all wordy and codey, right? It might look like that. What else might artificial? Oh, it might look like that. It might look like some little face with a clock, with a computer clock. Oh, that's kind of weird. It could look like this. It could be you hanging out on Saturday night playing with a robot and getting your butt kicked by that robot. Definitely those are all possibilities. Mm, anything else? No, no, no. I like the one with the robot. Or it could be, maybe it looks like this. Maybe it looks like a little robot taking a long time to make, probably not a long time, or it might look like this. Does anyone remember this movie? What was that movie called? Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it was about artificial intelligence. All right, so this is what we're going to be talking about today, and I have a few things for you. We're going to actually do a little bit of reading today, not too much, and we're going to look at some interesting vocab about artificial intelligence. So let's jump in, shall we? So let me give you the document so you'll have access to all the stuff we're going to be looking at today. So here it is. Um, yeah. So we're going to look at a few articles. We're going to look at one article in particular. And then I got a few questions for you. And then I'm going to send you off to do a video after, which is pretty interesting. So um, let's start. So let me give you that. It is all about it. And there's tons of movies about AI. You're totally right. So please take that document, open it up, and you will come here, and you will have access to everything we're going to work on today. So let's uh, jump in. So number one, I'd like you to do this. I'm going to send you off, uh, and I'd like you to f tell me the answer to this, because it's basically the first question we need to answer. I'd like you to take a minute, go online, and find a definition for artificial intelligence. Oh, sorry. My head is in the way. Not very intelligent. Better. Okay, so go online and I want you to find a definition. What is artificial intelligence? What is the definition of artificial intelligence? Is it a computer? Is it something else? Does it, I'm sure it's a little more sophisticated than saying, oh yeah, it's a computer that thinks. What is the definition? So go online, come back, and pop the definition into the chat so we can take a look at it and see what it's about. Only human, you need to be in this conversation because today we're talking about artificial intelligence. So humans or not human, you need to be in here. Um, OK. Vlade, the study of how to produce machines that have some of the qualities that the human mind has, such as the ability to understand language, recognize pictures, solve problems, and learn. Hmm. Interesting. And I guess it's talking about, you, you mentioned like human, human qualities. But imagine computers will have qualities that we don't have. And they'll be able to understand things that we have no idea about. That blows my mind. You blew my mind, Vlad. Uh, Ziad, a branch of computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers. OK? Branch of computer science, really. The simulation. So simulation is similar to practice. Uh, si the simulation of intelligent behavior. So basically making, maybe making decisions, making smart decisions uh, in computers. OK, so there's another one. Tatiana, is intelligence demonstrated by machine? OK, so thinking, uh, certain abilities. I can get what's artificial intelligence. If it's artificial, it can't be intelligent. Hmm, I don't know. I guess we'll find out in a few years, won't we? The capacity of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Yeah, OK, so it's imitating us, but eventually, will it need us? Good question. Uh, all right, the ability of a computer program or a machine to think and learn the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks, you know, things, uh, do jobs, tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation. Ooh, very specific ones. So again, so I'm getting some, some of the lengthier definitions are saying that a lot of the AI activities that we're planning 
we're trying to make them obviously similar, obviously, to the activities that we do on an everyday basis. Really interesting. Um, okay. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Cambridge, whatever. They got a definition. That's fine. Better than nothing, right? Uh, emphasizes the intelligent machines. Okay, so there we go. We're getting a picture here. Uh, so we, we're getting a picture that it's a, it's a lot about artificial intelligence as machines that we want to mimic, copy human behaviors. All right. My toaster is more intelligent than some people. That's true. It pops at the right time. It could be right. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So first question is, before we're actually going to jump into a reading here, I'm going to serenade you with my voice for a short, a short amount of time. So the first question is, do you think AI is already being used around the world? And if you do know where, maybe give us an answer. Do we have, you know, do we, is, we're, we're always talking about it, it's going to be a future thing, but is it happening now in different places around the world? So what do you know about this? Do you know anything about where it's being used, how it's being used? YouTube and Facebook, like how? How, maybe? how, is, it, how is it being used? Um, one of the things that I saw in, in an interview today, oh no, Nana, look at all the definitions above. It's all above you. It's a read everything that people put above. What is AI? Yeah, everybody gave a definition. But one of the things I read today is that, you know, there's a lot of Facebook sites, Facebook sites? YouTube sites that are, that might actually be AI sites like there there's no person on them but there might be a computer collecting information or something like that it is happening now uh, so yeah but how is it happening now do you guys have any examples of you know well let's take a look let's let's search together is artificial intelligence <coughs> how do I, I don't even know how to make that question what are some examples of artificial intelligence today Let's see if we get one. What do we got? Mm, okay. Well, yeah. I guess we got some basic examples. Examples like, for example, Cortana or Siri, something like that, or whatever. So let's see. Let's see. Ten powerful examples of artificial intelligence. What do we got? Quantum computing. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we know about this, some kind of super fast computing. Let's see, while well, they're working on that. Siri, Alexa, okay, there they are, Tesla. Uh, cog Tesla, if you don't know Tesla, you have no idea what you're missing. This is quite possibly the one of the best cars ever made. Uh, not only for the fact that it's received so many accolades, maybe awards and praises, but because of its predictive capabilities, self-driving features and sheer technological coolness. So basically, uh, Tesla has some smart technology, some AI, which helps to control the car. Interesting, okay, what did you guys find? I watched a movie about AI and it used a factory for collecting the plastic from the garbage. Great idea, Amr, very nice, yeah. That, we need more of that, don't we? We need, if we're gonna use robots, we need them to clean up this earth because we're, we're not doing a good job, man. Uh, Noir, it's being used to choose the applicants for a job by analyzing their facial features to determine whether they are suitable for the job or not. Oh my god. You can determine if they're good for the job by their facial features? What is useful for studying? What is the useful? What is useful for studying an artificial intelligence course? Uh, sorry, say that question one more time, Nariana. Uh, maybe it's already being used for Google, FBI? That would make sense. In movies, smart houses have such a technology. Also, the rich can afford it. Yes. Uh, what else we got? Medicine. It's used a lot. OK. Surgery. So there we go. There's some examples as well. Maybe in Japan is more interested in artificial intelligence. Yeah, probably. Probably. Japanese love their robots. They do. What else we got here? Box Ever. What is that? So there's another one here. Uh, what does it say? Let's try one more here. Cogito, what is Cogito? Originally co-founded, oh, let me make that bigger. Come on, where are you? Here we go. Originally founded by CEO Joshua Feast, Cogito is quite possibly one of the most powerful examples of behavioral adaptation. So changing behavior 
uh, to improve the emotional intelligence of customer support representatives. So basically, they're, they're trying to help customers who buy, buy things, I guess. Uh, the company is a fusion, a combination of machine learning and behavioral science. So studying the behaviors of people and also using machines to study it to improve the customer interaction for phone professionals. This applies to millions upon millions of voice calls that are occurring on a daily basis. Okay, so it has something to do with using your phone and collecting information, maybe something there. Okay, anyways, so I'm going to go on. Uh, I'm going to get away from this. What do you guys got? YouTube knows which kind, yeah, so that's right. Obviously, YouTube is a good example, right? They know which kind of videos we're watching, and they recommend other ones. Rehab, I watch many Korean dramas which talk about robots that can replace humans in companies. Of course you did. Of course you did. We've all seen the movies, right? Uh, iRobot, um, AI, I think the movie, this one was actually called AI. This one, right? Artificial, yeah, artificial intelligence. There we go. So that was it. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, it's just a compilation of concepts and information. This is not intelligence. It doesn't generate thought. It doesn't have IQ. Hmm, but what's IQ? Isn't it what it wouldn't, I, you know, like if, if it collects information and it organizes information, it's kind of a basic intelligence, no? Uh, so currently artificial, yeah, so I saw robots helps to care for old people. The Sophia, the robot can mimic lots of emotions. If you haven't seen Sophia the robot, I think this is the one. It's a bit weird, I'll be honest with you, but this is a robot that was created. And the crazier thing is I heard that Saudi Arabia actually gave this robot citizenship, which doesn't really make sense to me. But this is the talking robot, so apparently it's capable of having a conversation. I've seen it. The conversations are kind of weird, so obviously the technology is not amazing yet, but it, this robot does have conversations with people. Is the most artificial, possibly. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, there's a link in your document, so if you click on this link, you're going to go to a website, and it's called The Guardian. So let's take a look at this, and I'm going to introduce you to this, which is an interesting one. Now, I can't watch this video, but you can definitely watch this video. So click on the link from the student copy where it says reading, and you go here, and you'll go to this page here, uh, here, and you're going to see world's first AI news anchor. So news anchor is the person who tells the news. Unveiled. And unveiled means shown in China. So this is a picture of the artificial intelligence news anchor that is going to be used to tell news in China. It says the tireless artificial news reader simulates, copies the voice, facial movements, and gestures. Gestures of real life broadcasters. So let's take a look. So you go ahead, you check out the video, tell me what you think. It's kind of interesting, kind of creepy. So let's see what the article says here. It says, China State News Agency, Xinhua, this week introduced the newest members of its newsroom. AI anchors, so again, the people who report the news, who will report tirelessly. So basically, it's, it's a robot, so it can give the news any time of the day. All day, every day, from anywhere in the country. Chinese viewers were greeted, mm, greeted, greetings, earthling. Chinese viewers were greeted, basically say hello, with a digital version of a regular Xinhua news anchor. So basically, the AI image was another news anchor. So they just copied the face of this one news anchor and they created an AI version of him uh, named Chu Huao, or I don't know how to say that. The anchor wearing a red tie and pinstripe suit nods his head in emphasis, blinking, and raising eyebrows slightly. So obviously he copies some kind of facial movement a little bit, right? So emphasis, mm hmm, blinking with your eyes when you do that. So he says, so here's some, some, something that they quoted from him, not only can I accompany you, stay with you, help you, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, I can be endlessly copied and present at different scenes to bring you the news. So basically, this robot could appear here 
or it could appear in another place or in another place in another place in another place at the same time. So you, this person could split, this AI can split themselves into 10, 20 different AIs and do the news in different locations or whatever, whatever video you got. Uh, different scenes to bring you the news. Xinhua also presented an English speaking AI based on another presenter, so a different person, who adds the development of the media industry calls for continuous innovation, always creating continuous innovation, and deep integration, deep connection going inside with the international advanced technologies. I look forward to bringing you brand new news experiences. Right, okay, so there we go. So that's, what it, that's the guy that they copied it on, and the rest of it, and that's it. So what do you guys, so that's, that's kind of what's going on. That's the AI copy. So what do you think? That's really the only question I got for it. What do you think of that? You got AI doing the news. You got AI telling you what to watch on YouTube. It's already happening. Uh, Sarah, we're talking about artificial intelligence, and you can check out this link below and check out the article that we just kind of scrolled through. We did a little bit of it. So what do you guys think? Oh, sorry, that's not the question. Let me retract that one. Uh, no, not that one. OK, I can't retract it. It's there. Anyway, so that's the question. The question is, what do you think? It's pretty crazy, right? It's, uh, it's kind of interesting that we're, you know, you're alive in this time, and you can see some really interesting technology being developed. Uh, so let's see what they say. Ego Smart, uh, they are obstacles. They are obstacles of free press. They don't have feelings and do what they are ordered. Yeah, well, that's the news as well, right? Uh, sometimes they just want to give the news. And yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a gimmick, right? Like, it's, people think, oh, it's so cool. I got to watch that new. Maybe they don't like, maybe it's a gimmick. Maybe they don't watch it in the future, but maybe people don't like it. They're just like, oh, it's a robot. Hmm, it's interesting. Yeah, it makes you start thinking about how do you feel about robots, doesn't it? Uh, it's a weird concept. Yeah, I agree. News readers will lose their jobs. A lot of a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Are you going to have a job in the next twenty years? That's a great question. Um, all Chinese look like a bot. Come on. Zia, uh, poor news anchors. They're going to soon get taken over by robots because robots don't care about high salaries. Also, as well, right? He does. He does look human. And if you look at his voice, I think the only thing that's weird is the mouth movement and the eyebrow movement. It's just a little bit unnatural. It's not. It doesn't look real yet. Uh, scared, yeah. Thinking what might happen if a mistake happened and humans couldn't control them anymore. Right. Hollywood. We've all seen the movies. We know what. We know what happens. Uh, so, yeah. Is AI more dangerous than humans? Great question. Is it? There's a few TED Talks out there, and if you don't know uh, this website, you should know this website. It's called TED Talks. Um, sometimes I use this for my classes as well, and they have some really interesting ones about uh, artificial intelligence. So check them out there. They're all there. There's so many interesting talks. Uh, check that out if you have some free time. Okay, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, it's a little crazy, a little scary substitution of human beings. Yeah. It makes you think, right? It's maybe people are going to start getting angry. It's like, oh, a robot took my job. I don't like that robot. Maybe we're going to start getting angry, right? We know. We've all seen the movies. Uh, English teachers might be OK for a few years. I feel like we, we're still there. Maybe, maybe I got 10 years left, hopefully. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump in. Let me, I'm going to give you some more questions. And then at the end of all the questions, you're going to watch a video. So um, might I be a robot as well? Maybe. Maybe I am a bit of a robot. I kind of do repeated tasks every day. Sometimes I feel like a robot. So let's start with this. Let's start with your questions. What kind of questions do you have about AI? Before we get into these questions, I have a bunch of questions that we can talk about, some vocab we're going to talk about. But what do you think? What's your, what questions do you have about artificial intelligence? Throw them into the chat. Let's get a discussion going. I mean, there's a million questions you're going to ask, right? Is my job going to be available in 20 years or 10 years or whatever? So what kind of questions would you have? Uh, link of the article, I can totally throw that in there. Uh, here we go. There it is. That should work. 
Okay, so what are your questions? What kind of questions do you guys have about artificial intelligence? Am I going to have a job? Um, you know, which jobs are they going to take? It's really about jobs a lot. How, how can artificial intelligence help people? Right? That might be a big question, maybe thinking about medicine or thinking about surgery or something like that. How much will an artificial wife cost? Hmm. You might have to ask a Japanese person for that. Um, good question. Hmm. Has anyone seen the movie? Now, what was the movie? Blade Runner, but the new one. So there's two Blade Runners. There's an old one, which was about the future. I think it was in like the 1970s or something. And then there's a new Blade Runner, which is also pretty cool. Uh, that one's all about the future and also about artificial intelligence, like this girl here is a robot. That's a pretty cool one. And of course, there's a million TV shows. And if you've never seen it, oh, please watch this one. Westworld, Westworld, so good. Up there with Game of Thrones until season eight. But this TV show is also really interesting. A little bit rude, so if you don't like naked people and lots of blood, I don't recommend watching this one, but it's, uh, it is pretty interesting. And it's all about how robots become a tool for humans. And we use them in different ways. Really interesting, a little bit scary. Uh, but yeah, really bloody and lots of nudity. So if you don't like those two things, maybe don't check that one out. Uh, OK, so there we go. What else? What are, what are your questions that you got? Uh, constantly changing, that bot is hot. Yep. Could this tech find solutions for many problems we face these days? What will they be to humans, friends, or servants? Great question. Very different ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Yeah, how can they help us medically? Or what, what kind of jobs are they going to do? What else would you want to know about robots? Are they going to understand people 100%? I think the answer is yes. As far as the books I've been reading, and I'd, I've talked about it before, but if you haven't read this one, uh, this one is a pretty good one too. This is Homo Deus, which is all about the future of humans, which is really interesting. And the first one you should read is Homo Sapiens, which is really the, the beginning, which is awesome, which is all about us in the beginning. Also a good book. Book. There we go. This book. Read that book and then read the second one. Really awesome. Really interesting. Can we control AI in the future? Great question. Good to know, yeah. And maybe, I might even, might even have an answer for you today with one of the videos that you guys are going to watch after we're done the class here. Uh, what else we got here? If humans create AI, it means they are not better than us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, AI can be dangerous and dirty jobs and do dirty jobs because it doesn't have feelings and, uh, and is essentially not the living entity. Question is, if we are able to manage it in the way, in our way, which is not dangerous for humankind. Yeah, great, great one, right? Can we manage AI without losing control? Oh, I'd say probably no. Uh, Gertie, I think all new technology can produce a little bit of expectation but technology is the future, yeah, uh, definitely. I love that old movie with the boy who was a robot. Yeah, I think it was AI, wasn't it? The AI, it's the little AI boy. Let's take a look, AI movie. It was really good, it was kind of sad, right? Because the robots, we didn't accept the robots to be this one. And Teddy, Teddy was super cute, that little bear. Oh man, so if, if you feel the, the urge to watch a good AI movie, that was a really good one. It was called Artificial Intelligence. It was really interesting. Uh, what else we got here? Do you think they will use them as soldiers? Probably. Uh, are they going to control us? Probably. How will AI affect human life? Great question. Uh, do you think AI do you think that AI will do what humans do in the future? Oh my goodness, Amar, that's a great question. Uh, maybe we'll have artificial politics, but we can't tell them artificial, but we can't call them artificial intelligence. It'll be artificial cynicism. Hmm. Yeah, maybe the robots will do all our politics for us, and then people will just do nothing every day. Are they organized or limitless? Is AI part of human greediness? Hmm, good question. If AI creates themselves in the future, after that we can't live. Maybe. 
I think this tech is better than the politicians leading the world now because its decisions will depend on scientific and moral issues. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to hit you with a few more questions. So answer these following questions. So we're gonna, after that, we're going to watch a video. But let's start with the questions. Let's get into the vocab. So question number one is this. And all of these, all of these will be useful for you after. So here's question number one. What will the margin of difference be, oops, between, I don't have the whole question in it, between human intelligence and AI? So basically, how big, so here's human intelligence, or let's say we put it like this. So here's human intelligence. And how much more intelligent will AI be than us? So if we say margin, margin means amount. So it's another way you can say amount. So what will be, what will the amount of difference, the margin of difference be between human intelligence and AI? What do you think will be the difference? Let's take a look. Maybe there's something. Human and AI intelligence. Let's see if somebody's done a scale. Let's see. No. Not really. No, just some weird pictures. OK, nothing really. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe somebody's put it into processing speed. That's interesting. There we go. Energy efficiency, basketball court, space, 1.6. Processing speed, 1 trillion operations, 93 trillion. I wonder if this would be anywhere near the truth. If humans could do 1, one trillion operations per second, the computers would do 93 trillion. I wonder if that would be similar, like kind of true. That's kind of interesting. All right, so obviously it's going to be pretty big. What do you guys think? They already started coding themselves out of human control. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, well, we don't know. I guess we'll find out in the future. All right, let's see. Uh, let's try another one. This one's good. Some nice vocab here. Uh, here, let's try this. Number two, what are some of today's threats? So threats means dangers. Uh, what are some of today's threats that could severely disrupt or destroy civilization? So don't only think about artificial intelligence. Think about other things. So a threat is something dangerous. And severely is strongly. And disrupt is kind of like interrupt, cause problems. And destroy is <laughs> destroy. And civilization, people. So what are some of today's threats that could severely disrupt, create a lot of problems, or destroy civilization? What do you think? What are some outside threats, some uh, existential threats that we didn't talk about yet? So not only artificial intelligence, but other things. Uh, nuclear war, yeah, definitely. Global warming, definitely. This is, could be a big one. Terrorism, potentially, right? Pretty much nuclear war seems like one of the big ones. What are some other things? Hate between people, war, a lot of war, terrorism, yeah. And what else? What else might come from outside the earth that might destroy us as well? Overpopulation, disease, illness, yeah, there's a lot for sure. Cybercrime, is cybercrime going to destroy us all? Mm, I don't think so, but um, I was thinking about uh, asteroids or meteors, basically things coming from space. And that's, that's an interesting thing, is one of the things he talks about is that we don't think about those things very often. We only started to think about like what things can destroy people, right? Uh, they'll never be dangerous, just take them from the jack. The jack, what's the jack? Um, hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. So there we go. Existential threats. And the great question, the fun question, which we can talk about Hollywood now, is number three, uh, will AI destroy civilization? So basically, if AI gets created, are we gone? Are humans gone? We're totally gone. Asteroids are a rare threat. You're totally right. But I guess down the road, you never know. So what do you think? Uh, will AI destroy all of us? Or is Hollywood correct? Are we, is, is every movie about Hollywood and AI like it ends in a terrible, terrible way? And I guess maybe what's the solution? How do you stop that from happening? Because you know somebody is going to somebody is going to create better and better robots all the time, right? They're going to get smarter and smarter and smarter. Mm -hmm. Do I believe in astrology? Um, not really. 
I don't think so. Um, there might be some some things there, but I don't understand it, so I'm not sure if it's if there is any basis for it. No, no. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you got some confidence there, rehab. Will AI destroy us all? I don't know. Um, I've been watching some videos, so now I now I've got a little more insight into this, but I don't want to spoil the video for you, so I'm not going to give you too much of my opinion here. Uh, Blade, people are the biggest danger for the Earth. I could say we are the virus spreading around the Earth. Not nice to say, but we are poisoning everything. I do kind of agree with you, Blade. It's uh, it's really our responsibility as well, right? Everything's possible. No, we don't know. Never. AI can't destroy us. We can destroy them. That's right. Terminator. You guys saw the movie. So you guys saw the Terminator movie where they destroyed the robots, saved the human race. Skynet, maybe Google. Maybe Google is the new Skynet, if you guys know that re movie reference. Yeah. Uh, Maya says, I don't think so. People will make, will make something to have limits for AI. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Corrupt people. If you can unplug electricity, you can destroy AI. But what about the sun? What about if they start using, what about if AI starts using the sun? Or some other energy source that is basically limitless for a long, 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 long time. Uh, not at all. Humans create this tech that will be able to control it. Mm hmm. You think Hollywood's exaggerating? Hmm. Okay. Let's try another one. This one's interesting. I like this one. Um, why is comparing humans to the animals around us an interesting comparison? So think about artificial intelligence. Now compare humans and animals. Cows, chickens, dogs, cats, whatever, geese, whatever you want to talk about. So why is it an interesting, I, I think it's kind of an interesting comparison. Why do, do you think it's an interesting comparison to compare humans to other animals? And why is that an interesting comparison? Why do you think it might be? Uh, Amir says, I think we created uh, AI, so no the AI, just AI, to help humans not to destroy <laughs> humanity. Well, I hope so. I hope, they're, I hope we create them to help us. Rodrigo, so we destroy them on a cloudy day. Okay, <laughs> just take them out when it rains. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd, I don't think so. As always, as always, wants control things. Some people want to control things. Okay. Mm no, I don't think so because we created them to help us. You should ask Darwin. Hmm, maybe I will. Maybe I will ask Darwin. So I think the answer for this one here, uh, why is comparing humans to animals interesting? Humans are the smart animal, right? So we have a lot of control over other animals. Dogs, cats, cows, chickens. We control those things very easily these days. So what would happen if something smarter than us and much, much, much smarter than us became available? What would happen to us? Would we become the cows and the chickens and all that? It's an interesting concept, right? So imagine yourself that you, that we, we think we're pretty smart. Maybe we won't be smart anymore if artificial intelligence comes along. We'll turn into the lower life form, the, the, the dumb species of animal, whatever, right? Uh, what else? Uh, because animals are trying to live in symbiosis with nature, that's a big difference to humans. Hmm. Are they living in symbiosis? I think they're just they're taking care of themselves, but they can't take care of themselves like we can take care of ourselves, and that's why it's still kind of equal in the animal kind of kingdom, right? Uh, maybe we will be like apes comparing to AI because they can get immense amounts of data. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Kazewa says, uh, it's interesting because we have, we all have a great duty on Earth and we are the top intelligence to understand our living things. Okay, cool. Let's try another one. Let's take a look at number five. Drones. Do you know what drones are? Let's take a look at some drones. Do you know Amazon? So these are drones. These things. Those are drones. And I remember not so long ago, there was a lot of talk about Amazon using drones to deliver things. So are basically, are these things available? Have you seen one of these things? And have you seen them delivering anything? 
Uh, drones. Let's see. Let's look at a few gifts. Oh, that guy's that drone's gonna get it. But here we go. Look at this one. So maybe this is a, this is the example of the Amazon drone. So this thing would fly and bring you your mail. So have you seen any examples of this? I don't think it's happening. Maybe they tried it a few times. But this is a drone, and they're looking at using them a lot more as well to deliver things. So we've got all different kinds. And then there was a drone recently in Iran which got shot down by, uh, by Iran. There was, it was a United States drone which was spying there. The Millennium Falcon. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. i got to get one of those. I want, I want all my stuff to be delivered by the Millennium Falcon. Amazing. All right, so there's that one. Okay. Let's see here. Now, one more. Two more. Here we go. Number six. Uh, number six, let's try this one here. Uh, why would propaganda created by AI be so dangerous? So this is a big, these are some big questions. So if you guys are having trouble with this, don't feel bad. These are kind of difficult questions to answer. Uh, but propaganda, what is propaganda? Let's take a look at some propaganda, shall we? That's so cool. Propaganda. Mm -hmm. So this was propaganda, even. I mean, it was basically saying women were going to work during the Second World War in America. But they were kind of promoting, they wanted women to go to work during the second. So we call it propaganda. When, they, when you create advertising because you want people to do something. So it is kind of propaganda. Uh, this one, some other classic American propaganda, right? So you're trying to get people to get involved in the war. Uh, what else we got here? <laughs> there we go. The little Captain America propaganda. Uh, for buying war bonds. So there you go. So these are all examples of propaganda. Basically, selling some ideas like an, similar to an advertisement. Right? Here's another one which was about Hitler. And they said, okay, we're going to get this guy with this cooperation going on. Right? So there we go. So the question is, why would propaganda created by AI be so dangerous? Let's see what you got here. <coughs> mm hmm. Yes, drones. Oh, some people still on the drones one. I think there's a little lag in the YouTube stream today. All right, so we got propaganda. Mm, propaganda is created by people uh, because they will use the AI in bad behavior, dramatic purposes. Fake news uh, is a propaganda as well. Yeah, as well, for sure. It creates imaginary something. Because we know, we believe that AI is honest and we let down each other because of their speech. Hmm, maybe. So anyways, I guess if you think about propaganda and you sell, you're kind of selling ideas, if AI had them and they were making the ideas, it could be pretty, they could be pretty good, right? If you have a computer making advertisements, probably the computer is going to be pretty smart and have a good ability to use propaganda, make advertisements. So you, if you're going to buy something, the computer might know exactly which buttons to push on you. All right, and then I think the last one, before I let you watch your video, is this one. So last one is here. So number seven, go ahead and do number seven. Uh, so a few other answers here. Propaganda was created because of controlling the human mind. Uh, they could be used in illegal activities, maybe. Vlade, their propaganda will be much more sophisticated to persuade people to do something. Exactly. Totally, Vlade. I think that's the one. And Ivan, because you can use AI to influence people's opinions. Exactly. I think that's the idea right there. And the last one, uh, number seven, a new word for you, maybe interface. Interface is similar to connection. So what kind of interfaces, what kind of connections between people and technology are being used today? Uh, which is an interesting question. Uh, so, so what kind of technology exists today that we put the technology with people? Uh, for example, uh, artificial hearts, heart valve. So you can look, there's one example, right? So it is artificial. These things can actually help your heart. 
to keep working, right? So there's one thing, artificial heart valves. Uh, prosthetics. Prosthetics. These things, right? These can help. Prosthetic legs are being used. And look, they're getting more sophisticated, right? They got batteries in them now. They got a lot of other things going on. So it's, uh, the technology is getting better all the time, right? There's some as well, right? So what are, yeah, smart watches, there we go. Um, so anything where we use, where we connect people and technology, what are some things we got? Uh, smart watches, artificial medical stuff. Yeah, I don't know either, but medical stuff. Artificial eyes, do we have artificial eyes? Probably, they're probably working on it. Phones, everything that is strange is always propagated as if it were to destroy us, both aliens, bots, and the Russians. Yeah, that's true. Uh, AI's propaganda is a reflection of human propaganda. It will be, I guess so, it depends what you're selling. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, drones, yeah, all those. All right, so I think I've given you a few words today that you need to do for this video. Um, so margins, severely disrupt. So I give you a lot of words here and we did a few at the top as well. So pretty sure you're ready to watch the video. Um, so the only thing we can do before is who is Elon Musk before I set you up and go on this video. So let's take a look at this man. Because Oh, a cochlear implant. Oh my goodness. That thing that used to support the heart. Yeah, uh, what was it? It was a heart valve. I think it was called a valve. Oh, where did it go? Uh, here. Heart valve. Artificial heart valve. Valve, I guess it would open and close. Open and close. Okay, so the last question of the day is who is this man? And why is he a good person? Why is he an interesting person to talk to about artificial intelligence? So what do you know about this man right here? He's got some crazy hair going on. Let's see, let's find a better photo of him. This one's pretty good. So there's the man right there. Who is this man? And what, what has he done to get to deserve a lot of attention to talk about artificial intelligence? Uh, so what do you know about him? What, okay, so we got Tesla. Yeah, so he's the CEO and he's the creator of Tesla, which is the electric car. So let's take a look at some Tesla cars. So basically trying to move the world to electric cars. So there's a Tesla right there. Okay, so it's all electric. There's no gas. It's kind of the future of cars, right? He is CIA. <laughs> CEO makes more sense. Uh, yeah, so we got Tesla there. Uh, SpaceX was the other one, right? Founder of SpaceX. So this is SpaceX. So basically, uh, this company is sending rockets into space, and I think one of the plans is also to send people into space. Maybe that's part of the way of raising money as well. So he also owns that company there, and they create rockets, and they send them quite often. You can actually see them on YouTube, and you can watch them send. Yes, and he is also one of the guys who is interested in colonizing Mars, uh, which is interesting for me. I mean, I don't know if I'm interested in colonizing Mars, but a lot, some people are, and uh, that's kind of interesting. And he does want to protect humans from AI. He's kind of concerned about AI, which is why he's kind of a good person to talk to about this topic. So let's see some Elon Musk facts. I'm kind of curious. Ooh, Solar City, I don't know about that. So let's see what we can find about Elon Musk. What can we find? What does Google tell us? All right, so here's some facts. Musk has South African, Canadian, and US citizenship. He has a net worth of $28.1 billion. Not bad, not bad, Musk, Musky. Number three, he taught himself computer programming <laughs> at age nine. Oh my God. That's, that's insane. Age nine, he was doing computer programming. Number four, Musk dropped out of Stanford after two days. Number five, Musk was the inspiration for Tony Stark. What? Why was he the inspiration for Tony Stark? Because Tony Stark was a comic book character before Elon Musk, so that doesn't make sense. Musk's official Tesla salary is way lower than you think. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of curious. Let's click on that link. Uh, let's see, what is colonizing? Colonizing is when you go to another planet and you live there. 
or for example, maybe you know the Spanish they came to South America a long time ago and they colonized. So basically, when one country goes into another country and they take control, we call that colonization. Uh, there we go. So there he is. There's the man there. Twenty-eight, twenty-one point eight million dollars. Some interesting stats. Uh, not sure why the Iron Man one is there, but anyways, what else do we got here? He only makes $40,000, that's interesting. Uh, so he's worth a lot, but apparently he doesn't make a lot at his company. Musk is the owner of a submarine car, so basically a car that goes underwater. Oh, from a James Bond film, ah, interesting. So he owned that, that's really interesting. Now what else we got? He's a big X-Men fan. Ah, Musk decided to name some of the factories new robots after X-Men characters. For example, Xavier, Iceman, Wolverine, Storm. Okay. These robots are like superheroes, so we figured they deserve superhero names. Very cool. Musk ran a nightclub out of his house in college. Interesting. Very nice. And number 10, Musk started building his own rockets when he was a kid. Not surprised. He was a master at Dungeons and Dragons. Interesting. And he used to live on a budget of $1 per day. Why? Musk was determined to survive on a $1 per day by buying food at the supermarket in bulk. He arrived in North America. I went more for the hot dogs and oranges, but you do really get tired of hot dogs mixing things up. So he basically lived on a dollar per day by buying big amounts of food at the supermarket. Wow, interesting. Where is he from? I don't even know where he's from. Let's find that out. Where is Elon Musk from? There we go. Google knows me. They know. Uh, South Africa. Okay. There we go. Pretoria, South Africa. That's why. Okay. Uh, Kent, he made it, but not when he was 12. Children were trapped in the cave. What the cave? Hmm? Not sure what that is. Uh, okay. Nope. Bogans do that. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Um, I guess that's it. I'm going to leave you to it. And I'd like you to watch this video, and this will be the end of class today. So I'm going to cut it a little bit short so you guys have time to watch this video. It's all about Elon Musk and his ideas about artificial intelligence. So go ahead, watch it. Most of the vocabulary that you've learned today is going to be in that video. So you can turn it on, check it out, watch it from beginning to end. It's kind of an interesting conversation, and he gives all his ideas about what people need to do to deal with artificial intelligence. So anyways, that was a lot of, uh, a lot of vocab and uh, maybe a lot of chat about artificial intelligence, but go ahead, watch that video, check it out, and let me know what you think uh, next week when we come back. So check it out, that's all I can say, watch the video, and uh, I think that's it for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed that chat about AI. Um, I don't know, it's something we, we could never talked about before, so watch it, let me know how it was next week. That's it for me. And again, if you guys have any suggestions for ideas that you want to do in the future, let me know and I'll try to get those in as well. Other than that, have an amazing week, weekend. Uh, see you all next week. Same smart time, same smart place. Big kiss, big hug. Uh, don't let the robots take control. Fight back, fight, 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 and fight Google. Okay, bye-bye everybody. See you next week.
Got you in the summertime with your fine ass. Mer Merlot in that wine glass. She dope as hell from Jersey, baby. White girl, but the curves are crazy. And she up all night like Adderall. She like sushi too, we compatible. And these other guys have it, so they mad to know. Cause I'm ill like a dragon roll. Got cover girls in my room, but they don't need no makeup though. They just trying to party. Live too fast to take it slow. Got summer flings and these summer things. But we just making memories. Just promise you'll remember me in that time. When I met you in the summer. And I came to your town. We fell in love, then we burned it to the ground, and, and we could be together, baby, but I gotta leave soon, everybody's listening now, oh, we got nothing to lose, when I met you in the summer, the summertime, I met you in the summer.